Hey programmers and game developers, in this video I'm going to show you how to use abstract classes in your projects. You'll see how to simplify your code and make it easy to add new features without breaking everything. Let's start with the definition of abstract classes, then take a look at some practical examples that probably fit into one or more of your projects. Abstract classes are incomplete classes. They have functions that do stuff like this item that handles on trigger enter 2 d but they also have methods that have no implementation. Notice that the use method here doesn't have an implementation. This is the incomplete part. So why would we want to do this? Why would we want an incomplete class? It's because we can inherit from it and make a variety of different items. We can make a key that opens locks, or a blaster that shoots enemies, or any other kind of item that we want. Then in our code that uses the items, we reference the item base class that on trigger enter 2 d adds the items that we touch to our inventory, and our inventory code doesn't care what type of item we're using. It just calls use and the implementation for that specific item is called. By the way, if you want to learn more about this specific implementation and building 2D platformer games from scratch with all the physics, persistence, and boss fights, this is all detailed in my latest game programmer course, and there's a birthday sale going on this week, so if you're interested, go to game.courses or check the link in the description. Now let's look at another example. Maybe your game doesn't have items, but it has things your player can interact with. This can be handled with interfaces, and I've used that as an example in my recent interfaces video, and it does work, but switching from an interface to an abstract class can give us some really cool benefits. Let's take a look at this interactive object class. It has an interact method, just like my interface would, but it also checks when our player is in range to use it and sets a boolean so our other code knows when the object can be interacted with and when it can't. Our interaction code can just check the can interact boolean and call interact if it's true. Of course, we could also make can interact into a virtual bool, so it could be overridden by the subclasses. Here we override can interact to ensure that the treasure chest can only be opened once. It's also important that I mention a few things not to do with abstract classes. First, don't create a giant abstract class that everything in your project inherits from. If you feel like you need to do that because everything is sharing code, you should probably take a look at extension methods instead. Second, when you think about making an abstract class, consider if it could be an interface. Does it actually do something or just define a contract? If it's just an abstract class with everything inside it being abstract, well, it might be simpler as an interface. And that brings me to my final point for Unity developers. Unlike interfaces, abstract classes can be easily serialized in the inspector. If your class inherits from item, you can add it to a list of items without needing to do anything special. You can't, however, add the item script to your objects because it's incomplete and it wouldn't make sense and won't let you do it. So you have to inherit from your item script and create something else that actually implements or fills in that missing implementation. If this was helpful, please let me know in the comments. And if you have questions about abstract classes, please drop those down below as well. And if you're interested in learning a whole lot more, make sure to check out the course while it's on sale too. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.